This video is going to address the uh, problem of what do you do when you walk up to your Tesla and all the door handles are presenting normally but one of them when you grab it and pull does nothing. So it's stuck but the other doors on the car you know are working fine and when you lock the car um, you know all handles retract normally. So here's what the handle looks like on the driver's side of a car uh, in North America or the left hand side of the vehicle. Um, this is the mechanism that you'll find inside the door that's controlling the motorized door handle and there's a micro switch on this handle that um, uh, breaks on the inside and we're going to show you how that um, can be addressed. You can solve that yourself. You can take this uh, mechanism out of the car by removing the interior door card uh, from the car. We're not going to tell you how to do that. There's other videos on the internet but there's um, basically four bolt holes on the inside. I think it's a 10 millimeter socket. You take off those four uh, bolts. You can carefully retract this the inside of the car and pull it out. There's also one connector you'll find to undo. Um, what some guys do and what I recommend doing is covering this handle uh, with masking tape uh, before you pull it out of the car and that way it prevents you know scratching it or scuffing it as you're trying to wiggle it outside through the inside. So of here's the door. that mechanism again. It's out of the car and I just put it on a table to work with it. You're uh, you'll have a cr your chrome handle will still be attached on your mechanism when you take it out. The chrome handle on this one has just been removed, so it's uh, it's a demonstrator unit here. That'll be the only difference. What you're going to do is flip it over, and you're going to find this black tacky material stuck on to um, keep the weather out of the handle mechanism. And you just pull this stuff away. Uh, so here's that thing peeled off. Keep it intact and keep the. Um, Keep the rubberized material intact all the way along the edges. You're just you're going to reattach it using the same material, so try to be careful. Um, I found that this comes off quicker and easier in in colder weather. So if your car's been sitting in the sun, let it cool down, uh, get it get it down to room temperature or below, and then when you're pulling it off, you can also if you pull it off in quick you know in quick bursts, it comes off mostly intact. If you're slow, pulling, slowing it, um, slowly pulling it off, it'll get all stringy and gooey, and it's harder to deal with. So if that little item there can come off quickly. Now here, here's a look inside of what the door looks like. Here's the basic mechanism that goes in. I'll just show you, you know, this is the part that's moving in and out. Every time the door handle is being pulled, or sorry, being uh, motorized for uh, presenting the handles, this is moving in and out. And you'll notice there's two micro switches here that go in and out every time. Every time that door handle re retracts or extends, there's a micro switch there and there's one micro switch here. Deep, kind of deep down in. It's going for the ride. So I'm moving this handle back and forth. And eventually it's the, uh, the wear and tear of the wire motion, wear and tear of the motion on these wires here that caused the problem. You'll see that this micro switch down here actually has, uh, has severed. So there should be two wires going to this micro switch. The white one here is, is loose. It's detached from the micro switch, and that's the uh, that's the whole reason why you can't pull and open the car door. So these micro switches um, can re be replaced as a, as a unit um, with a small repair kit from Tesla, or if you if you want, you can actually open the backing of a micro switch um, and reattach a wire to um, to the terminal on the switch. Here's what a micro switch kit looks like from Tesla. This is the replacement part part number. Uh, for that. I just read the label here of uh, the part that's inside the uh, the car on every one and um, you can, I don't know if this is obtainable part or what but anyway here's what the switch kit looks like. It's that. So it's got the two switches on it and the connector. Now just for a point of interest and comparison here's guess what three switches that came out of my micro switches that came out of my car of all the various different handles and look at each one of them. It's the switch that's on the shorter segment of the wire and it's always always the white wire that's detached itself and when that happens you can't open that door so it's that kind of a Russian roulette thing. The handle again there's there's three micro switches on here I, mean, I don't want to confuse you here's one that we're not touching it's the one on the handle here and the one on the handle here that that come as a pair on that one single harness those those come out as a pair this micro switch will, will stay in place for the whole time but Tesla what they've done is you'll find these little um, you know zap straps. They use lots of zap straps in the um, in the handle. Everywhere you see them that's wire along the wiring harness and this whole bundle here uh, of wires just wherever you see zap straps snip them 
as a bundle and that will give you access to um, you know to disconnect the connectors you need to worry about which is this brown one here and um, pull the wires out get the switches out and put them in so have on hand some zap straps uh, to like small ones four inch long uh, zap straps to, to redo all those when you're done and put them back in place there's also little places where they route the wires so take note of where they route the wire and when you put in and lay in your new uh, your new switches or when you're reassembling your uh, your unit try to route the wires similarly except uh, I'm going to show you how to write, route the wires quite differently uh, up here and up here so that um, you don't run into the problem Tell you again. what, this so video is getting better and better as we go. I'm learning uh, as we're doing it here. Take the, I've found it's a little bit easier to start the mounting of this script, um, switch, or you may probably even getting at it for unmounting it. If you take the CAN controller module out of the window, out of the um, door handle, here there's only two screws. Again, they're, uh, you know, Torx tips, so you're gonna need a funny bit to get at them. Uh, but anyway, it comes out pretty quick. Get that module out. Okay, with that module popped out, I mean, it lets you get started on the, um, at least lets you get started on these screws in a funny angular kind of way, uh, like this. Right, which saves you saves you some screwing uh, with the pliers. If there, it's near, yeah, you know what, damn near. It's all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to send this one into Tesla. I think it's, uh, it's worth doing there. I've got it snugged in there. I didn't have to use the damn pliers uh, after all. So uh, I wonder what we're gonna learn by the end of this video. And hey, neat, I just discovered something. Uh, I was talking about these tools you can get with all the uh, strange, you know, strange heads on them. It's kind of a, well, that's kind of the tip you need. It's a Torx or a hex head there. Um, you can actually get in on this side. When, when the handle's fully retracted, uh, and I've tried this, you can actually get the tool in on an angle enough to, enough to start screwing this one out, which is kind of handy because this screw, unlike the other side, is not not really a box head. It's got a kind of a flange shape to it, uh, which makes it really hard to get um, pliers on it. But not only that, I discovered there's a pin here on the handle. You can slide this pin out of this mechanism here and take that. You take that out. There, the pin is out. This arm uh, lifts up, ta-da, giving you uh, easy access with the right tool to simply unscrew the micro switch, like so. So that's done. Okay, so the old switch is out uh, from the panel. Ta-da, guess what? Same problem on the shorter shorter switch, white wire, gonzo. So kind of add that to the pile of used parts and uh, here's the replacement part, all good. I wanted to show you something in here. Uh, I don't know if all cars have this, but this, this you may not have connected to anything on your uh, handle. This is the LED that uh, attaches underneath, shines underneath the door handles. It may have been an option for premium lighting or something like that, or not all Model S has got that for whatever reason, but if you wanted to attach an LED to uh, to this connector, you or two LEDs, or I don't know, no, it's just one, one per handle. You could do that here and figure out the way uh, by looking on you know the chrome handle bit that I've got removed here and not showing. Figure out the spot, the LED spot to put it. You might want to install your own LEDs. There you go. So there's a second purpose for this video, which is uh, not only fix your handle, but upgrade the lighting option to have the LED. The other connectors, other sensors, you know, you can see everything disconnected now. Um, here's the module, here's the CAN, you know, the CAN bus module that controls everything. It's connected by two data lines and power. It comes down here and, and out to the car. So that's just a kind of an overview. You'll see the empty spots where I'm gonna put on the switches. So go ahead and take your uh, replacement switch uh, attach it like the old one was to begin with, just mechanically get them set in the same positions. Okay, I've got that micro switch mounted back in there and Tesla might say, or you might find your wire kind of routed like this and you know, the service bulletin will say if you route your wire carefully, um, you know, it'll address this problem of flexing at this point. So I'm just gonna show you the, the motion. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge that. I'm gonna say even if your wire is routed this this way, or or maybe even if it's been routed, you know, coming down, you know, this way, just always grab this handle and uh, do some pushing on it when it's out, and you can you can see that wire flex. Whenever you see movement coming at uh, you know stopping at a fixed position, like here on the switch, right at that point, you know that 
eventually over time it's, it's going to let go. So uh, I like to do things differently and this is where I, 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 I have an idea that might help you. I, um, I, I split this little cup, um, piece of tape or whatever it is there on the harness just to get more distance on these wires. And what I'll do is I'll take this wire itself and what I do is I, I take it back up, kind of do a U-turn. And I do a U-turn right over the handle uh, like this and tack it down. So I tack the wire using, guess what, some of this black sticky goo that there's ample of. Usually you can take some excess, so I take a blob, you know, off of the um, cover itself for the uh, motor or, you know, there's a couple of blobs here. Take some of that. Uh, I'll just demonstrate, you know, take some of this and use it to pack the wire here down into, take more of that, don't be shy. <laughs> um, this stuff is really sticky and gooey and it's going to tend to hold this wire I think a little bit uh, more firmly the way you want it. When you do this and you have the wire coming around like this, so that's kind of a more optimized routing I think, I don't know. Um, when you when you move the handle, you know clearly there's no there's no flexing along this this piece at all. It's it's immobilized by that. So you know the wire is not going to break at the switch anymore. And if you have enough slack following that wire back to this connector and the way you tie things down with your zap straps here, um, you know there's a great long length of wire that you can have available. Uh, for the motion of the door uh, going in and out as long as it's uh, got It's a little bit fiddly, but you can find a way <coughs> um, To route it so that the flexing basically happens over the length of the wire You know and not at the uh, not at the points where it joins a connector. So That's what I've done and I don't really think that that wire at that switch is going to ever break again uh, so long as this you know blob of sticky stuff um, doesn't uh, become brittle, dry, hard, or take off. So you might try different materials or methods here um, to use this um, sticking down method. Uh, hot glue maybe, I don't know. But this stuff seems to be very durable and hanging up, holding on, you know, during different weather conditions that happen with the uh, on the inside of the switch. So good luck with that. On this side, it's a little bit, a little bit different. You've got actually this arm You've got the wire coming down. You've got this arm that we pop the pin out to get it up. So what you can do is you can just take a zap strap here, right where I'm indicating with the screwdriver. Just take a small zap strap and right about here. Tack that wire down here like that. And again, it won't be flexing right at the switch. Sometimes they break here, I'm told, but clearly from my car, they never have. It's always been on the other side. But if you want to just sort of be sure about this side as well, put a zap strap there. The test is when you got your work done, check the range of motion and you'll see underneath down in there, that arm actually comes near contacting a piece of plastic. You want to make sure that whatever you're putting does not come between uh, that arm and the plastic so that it has a free range of movement all the way to its limit. So check both sides. There you can see the switch making contact on its adjustable pad. But wherever you do it, make it make some of these adjustments to the routing or the way the wires tack down. Again, then you follow it all the way along the bottom and you'll zap strap that later. On this side, you have to be very careful about one thing here. I'm gonna to point to it with my screwdriver again here. This metal bar here and the micro switch that we didn't touch, this is the actual pusher. That's the thing that pushes the handle out. So you wanna keep things free of this crevice or gap in this area because that is going to get pushed forcibly um, by the motor when, there you can see it in a slack position. So keep wires out of underneath this bar here, because um, that will become a problem instantly. So yeah, nothing should be uh, in the way of that. So you can see where I've looped my wire around. I've done that to keep, you know, keep the wire clear of here. Keep a gap. That's it. So kind of reverse steps, attach all the connectors for uh, the various parts on the handle, the LED. Uh, this is the one I haven't plugged in yet to the harness. This one here is connected. Tack it all down. This goes back on. 
Back into the car. <laughs>